Present. Let's stand for a pledge of allegiance. Phyllis Saunders, please. Good evening, board trustees and residents. Um, I'm here representing the Block Club of University Park, Illinois. And I just want to say that we are going to be giving our heritage showcase um, at 227 Moni Road on Saturday, this Saturday, the 18th. Some of you may have already received your invitations or the flyers. Okay, it's going to be from one o'clock to five at, um, it's actually St. Mary's Church in one of their uh, rooms that we're going to be using. So please come, enjoy food, entertainment, and fellowship, <laughs> okay? Looking forward to seeing everyone. Flyers are here and um, on the table over there. Okay, if anyone has any questions, please see me or Mary Truss. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Uh, Ms. Melly. Good 
Good evening, everybody. Just have a uh, couple of questions, maybe one. Uh, Ms. Scott, can you please uh, answer this? And Ms. Uh, uh, Jones, can you please uh, make sure this goes on the record? Um, and maybe also our lawyer can uh, answer the question also. Uh, Ms. Scott, are you, as the village uh, manager here in University Park, are you going to be uh, Mr. Rudez's campaign manager? No, I am not. Okay. Are you going to allow any of the staff that work in Village Hall go out and uh, campaign, um, work the polls that we pay here, we, we pay here in uh, uh, Village Hall? So, the reason why I ask, let me tell you why I asked. It's a conflict of interest. Uh, when I hear from uh, Wells Footstep, uh, good uh, sources, that you are going to be uh, Mr. Rudez's campaign manager, I have to ask that question. And that's why I've asked Ms. T. And that's why I want to hear uh, some type of rebuttal from uh, the lawyer. Uh, can that happen? Is it fair for, um, uh, is it a conflict of interest, I should say? Uh, for the village manager to go out and pass out literature, uh, be a part of uh, the uh, mayor campaign. Also, allowing staff to take days off and go to the polling places. That's a conflict of interest. We pay you all. Okay. And I like to hear you too. I cannot control what an individual does on their off time. It's they're protected by the First Amendment, right? Um, there are certain protections that the Constitution provides for those individuals. So for me to tell a staff member that they can or cannot work for anybody in their off time, whether it's the Will County Executive, the Cook County Board President, the mayor, whoever, um, I'm not gonna subject myself to a lawsuit or the village. So with that being said, I am not assisting the mayor with this. I'm not the campaign manager. That also has to be disclosed if I am. I am not the campaign manager for the mayor. Okay. Uh, can you answer, can you uh, speak on that? Now, I'll tell you again, it's a conflict of interest. Uh, Don't give me no three minutes. The I mean, bar, sorry, bar is on electionary while they're working, okay? So when someone is on their own time, um, if, even if they're an employee here, they could support, they could work or support any of the candidates. The bar is when they're working, that's considered electionary, and that's what the bar is on. So if somebody, wants to do something on their own time, you may think it's a conflict of interest, but they actually has that right and it is, it is considered um, protected speech. So for that purpose, yeah, if they're working and they're trying to do that, that's the, the bar. But if they're on their own time, if they've taken a day off and they want to do hand out literature for any of the candidates, there's nothing that the village manager or the village can do to stop it. I'm talking about actually working in the polls. Actually being in the polls and working. If they are working on their own time, if they are not on village time, we cannot prohibit them from doing it on their own time. Okay. They're not on village time. And so they can take days off. If they have days off and they want to take days off, they can take days off. Okay. If they have vacation days, or days that they want to use, or they want to take those off. So, like I said, to do anything for any of the candidates for mayor, not just the current mayor, but any of the candidates, you can't prevent them from doing. It. Okay. Okay. Thank you, mayor. Just wanted to. Uh, okay. So, thank you. Thank you. That concludes our public comment section. Business discussion <laughs> item. Okay, we have a presentation. Go back to the website. Guys, a TOD study, RTA, please don't keep 
a long, long, long thing, okay? This presentation is basically talking about the money and the trans TOD is about what's going on around the metro station, new housing, retail, and this question, uh, presentation is going to be good. All right, thank you. Let's find the store. Come on. Okay. Can everyone see it? Free everyone to come closer if you'd like. Hi there, uh, my name is Robert Morris, I'm a senior analyst with the RTA, which is the Regional Transportation Authority. Uh, we are the umbrella organization that oversees the three different service boards here in the Chicago land region. So that's Metro, ACE, and the CTA in the city of Chicago. Um, so this program, or this project came out of our community planning program uh, that we offer technical assistance for any municipality within the region to apply to us. Uh, we work with that municipality, oftentimes bringing in a consultant to help us perform a uh, study or a plan. And I have here with me uh, who was project manager uh, from Salt Salt and Portable Events, Nick Fryer. I'm going to introduce himself and uh, he will go ahead and run us through high level presentation of the transit oriented development plan and the university part. Hi, once again, I'm Nicholas Meyer from Selman Little Event. I think, first off, I want to thank everyone from the village. Uh, I want to thank uh, the RTA as well as some of our partners. So, in addition to Selman Little Events, uh, we had Sam Schwartz and Goodwin Williams Group uh, as part of the team. As well as many, that, oh, sorry. As well as many members of the um, village of University Park staff. There were a lot of uh, meetings, a lot of time, a lot of uh, input into this plan that I think you'll, you'll see. So I just want to acknowledge everyone's time um, and, and, and contributions to this effort. So as the mayor said, this is focused right around the uh, Metro Park Station. So you can see the uh, Metro Station right here. This is University Parkway. And then we have GSU and then Vermont up in the top part of the image. This is where we think the, the most potential is for this transit part of development. Obviously, it's right next to the train station, uh, and it's right in between BSU and the industrial zone. So it's it's really well positioned for um, new development. So this has been a long plan. It's been uh, started in October of 2021, uh, where we started doing a lot of our research. We had a variety of community meetings throughout the process, and then we're right now in the final plan, sending it to the city for for adoption. Uh, so as I said, we had a lot of community engagement for three workshops. Uh, that's what it's shown here on the stage, both uh, virtual and in person, uh, and a lot of different activities, a lot of conversation about what's appropriate for the site, what the community needs, um, what the future vision of University Parkway is. Um, and so you'll see that reflected in a lot of play. We also had a survey uh, that was open. We had, I think it was about a little over 150 respondents talking about uh, what's important for University Park, what kind of assets that people want to see on this site. So, again, you can see GSU is, is a key asset. There was a lot of talk about different food options on site for grocery stores, as well as new restaurants and things like that. A lot of uh, demand, pent up demand for that. Um, and then, as well as a lot of options for pedestrian friendly access to the station and other uh, open space needs. So, all of that needed wrapped up into what we have here in the community vision, which is really about building a, a next generation station area with modern amenities that meet the community needs, um, that maximize connectivity both to and from the station, uh, and providing diverse options for housing. See the, the lower left hand corner and improving safety. We'll get to this in a minute. We have uh, Sam Schwartz, our transportation consultant, do a lot of safety analysis both in the station area and throughout uh, University Park. And they have a variety of suggestions. So, and then lastly, a welcoming public realm. I think everyone loves open space, loves kind of uh, those nice kind of things being outside when, when you can, when the, the weather allows. So, in addition to a lot of the community engagement, uh, we had a good performance group do a market analysis, uh, which really looks at the viability, looks at the demographics, 
and the future trends of the real estate in the area. And I think one of the, the key assets to this slide is uh, the chart from the lower left hand corner that talks about the population growth that's projected for the area. Um, they also dug into the individual types of real estate in and around New York City Park. And I think the key part of this slide is one, all the industrial development bringing all kinds of jobs to the area, but also the, um, the residential real estate. A lot of it is, was built around the, the 70s and 80s and is predominantly single family homes. So as you think about the different types of people that are coming to University Park, they need diverse housing options that aren't quite in the marketplace. Now. And that's what creates the opportunity for this development, this transit market development. So, as I mentioned, Sam Schwartz did a lot of um, um, transportation analysis. And what you're kind of seeing on the, on the map is it's a little bit that here is a map of University Park that they identified a lot of the hotspots, the, the safety concerns in different intersections in and around and they went through a lot of um, came up with a lot of recommendations for improvements to those intersections uh, things like bike lanes things like pedestrian crossings things like improved signalization that will help both traffic flow but also traffic safety in and around uh, both the uh, transit development and university park planning development so all of that uh, comes to this uh, slide right here, which is on the left, you see a conceptual site development. So you can see with retail and commercial down toward the University Parkway. Closer. Uh, in this area, this is where we see a lot of opportunity because of the visibility of uh, traffic along the University Parkway, the proximity to the view. Um, and then you see an opportunity for a boulevard to provide uh, additional connectivity to, to the station. Talk a lot about access to the station, particularly when there is a uh, train on the, on the tracks. And so we can just provide some additional connectivity that uh, might relieve some of the traffic. And then moving up, we have a mixed use area in the middle of the site, as well as some additional open space and some more residential. So that's kind of a conceptual organization of the site. And then on the right is more of a technical. Uh, technical organization on the site where we break it up into individual parcels and use as well as the streets. So this is that uh, land use diagram translated into a physical development. So you can see here we can kind of illustrate the roads and some of the potential development sites. We have an outline that we are considering for uh, the first phase, which is right around the station, uh, as well as um, you can see some of the open space around there that we envision. Now, this is just, just kind of uh, illustration for illustration purposes. Obviously, it'll take time to get here, but uh, we think that the, there's a lot of potential for this development to happen. And as we zoom in a little bit closer, this is a central open space right next to the station. So the station, uh, station entrance is right here. Uh, and we're, we're imagining um, a nice large open space that would Accommodate a variety of different activities, uh, things like market fairs or pop ups, uh, as well as some kind of sidewalk activities. I think there's a lot of potential for this, particularly right next to the station. You can imagine stopping there for, for a bike to eat or a bike to drink, or drink as you're getting on or off the station. So I think there's a lot of potential. The other thing that came up in a lot of our, yes. Um, just so I can follow the map, can you yeah. let me know which uh, which north, south, east, and west so I can get my. So, yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, so I can envision it. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah so to orient yourself uh, yeah. in terms of north, south, east, and west. So, so this will be the station. Uh, north is going to be that way. Uh, okay. So it's going to be up in the upper left hand corner of the site. Okay. Um, and then, so the University Parkway would be in the lower. Lower uh, right hand corner. Okay. So this is, if you're familiar, this is the existing parking lot for the metro station. Yes. And then it's lot. Yes. 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 You can see that. You can see that here. So this is University Parkway. That way is north. We're looking at this park right here. 
Does that help? Yeah. I, I, I was a little lost because it's, and Miss Millie is too, I thought the yeah. road was that an east, University <laughs> Parkway is an east west, so I guess was that the east west road that you were pointing to? The page. The back. Because then on the south end of that would be Governor State. I guess that's what I got yeah. lost at. This is Governor State here. Okay. This is the University Parkway. Okay. Here's the this is the East Mahana. Yeah. Now I get gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. And then the it's the state. State. Gotcha. So okay. if you want to orient yourself around this pool, you can see the, the pool that's right in the pool of water feature. Um, <laughs> it's right here next to the stage building. Why? Where's Cabana, please? According to your map, Cabana will be up here. And that's the west lot. Right? Yeah, that'll be the west lot. Off of Governor's Highway. Between Governor's and Cicero. Yeah. Um, so uh, one of the things that came up in a lot of our conversations was the potential for this to be uh, a model for not just transit-oriented development, but sustainable development. A lot of the programs coming out of GSU are focused on EVs to be charging various types of mobility, believing that this is an ideal place to implement a lot of those technologies. We also see a lot of the um, industrial development looking for those types of options as they look for places for the workers to, to live. So we think that this, this is an ideal place for things, yeah, things like charging stations, things like bike share programs, uh, different uh, strategies for stormwater management. All of those are potentials here um, that we think should be included in the development. So we talked a lot about vision, talked a lot about ideas on the site, obviously we need a plan to implement it. So included in the plan, I know you can't see this, Posted up on um, our website that you can access through the village uh, through the village's website is a plan that walks through a variety of implementation strategies, uh, development resources, um, and what you're seeing here in the matrix that identifies potential partners um, and timelines in terms of accomplishing those. So we, we think that we've given uh, a lot of research to, to developing a tool set to help implement. Finally, conclusions and next steps. So obviously we're here, step one, is we're presenting for, for official uh, adoption and approval for the plan. Uh, I think from there, there are about a variety of implementation steps. Um, and then lastly, um, Robert and the RTA have identified University, uh, University Park for a special financing district. So they identified funds to get to, to University Park to figure out an appropriate way to finance this development. So to do a more targeted research, more targeted um, effort to determine how to best uh, implement this plan. I don't know if I covered that, that correctly, yeah. Robert, but- yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can add on if you some questions on that. Yeah. So with that, yeah. um, thank you. And you can take questions. If I'm not mistaken, you all need to presentate several times. And then when did y'all want to build up? Did y'all ever decide on a thing for the first building? What is it going to be? The building is not on the
Yeah. No, no, no. It would be two, three stories. So, two, three stories. No, no. So no, 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 not mixed income. It has to do with the, the type. So it could include things like student housing, senior housing. Uh, ultimately, it's it's the developer that's going to decide the, the specific mix. Um, just think of it as a variety of different options. So my purpose here is so we've been researching different ways to utilize the system. We've developed this plan in collaboration with the community. A lot of community input um, developed this vision, but uh, we think that this provides a roadmap for developers or so I'm, I'm not a developer, I'm just a so it's this university. The village is not paid the RTA. The RTA has awarded the village grant to, in order to complete this. There's a local match component that was 5% of the total contract. I don't have that number in front of me right now, but we have this is our our program is a community planning program. So this is what we do throughout the region. Um, now our purpose here is because we want to be able to give the village the tools to implement the vision that the residents and the village wants. So we embarked on this planning journey, and we're presenting to you the the, the final plan, um, and we're asking that the village. Discuss this plan and move it through the adoption process. So you want to question three. Village of three. I gotta go Okay. Yeah, we can go back to that slide to, to talk about that a little bit more in depth. So the plan recommendations actually does recommend adding if you can go back one. This is probably the best. So uh, the plan does recommend at number eight here. Hey, could you highlight number eight? Plan recommends aligning University Parkway with the entrance of Governor State University and adding a signalized intersection. To have a light. No, full a signal is in like a, a traffic signal, a light. Uh, no, that would be that would be a new drive. Correct. Yeah. I'm sorry. But you know how. Yeah. What we had discussed in the public hearing is um, on the northern section of this development that we would create a road for possible ingress and egress all the way over to Crawford uh, Avenue that sits on the east side you know the university park rather than turning left Crawford Avenue that you know, don't want to go off for it. No the northern portion of no we can't encroach in the golf course except for that little section where the, the light uh the uh Traffic light is going to be. Other than that, we're not going to encroach at all on the clock. So y'all going to open up where that the traffic light is at right back up the state. That's where y'all going to open all that. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, just so it can if it, if, it, if it's eastward traffic, you can make a left at that night. You can go uh, east, west, or south to Southern State University, but it's not not very much. But it will take a little bit of the property away there. And right now, if you notice on the golf course, there's nothing really that would hinder that in there. It would fit right into the norm. But to answer your question about housing, they're going to do mixed use housing. Somebody asked. So it's going to be all of the above. It's going to be senior houses. Uh, Governor State was a part of this plan. 
they want student housing, you know, remember before it was two versus four now. So seniors were saying that why can't we get apartments over there? You've gotten it to the younger folks. So we're looking at BSU housing, student housing, single family dwellings, multi-family. So it's going to be mixed you and it's laid out beautifully. If you've ever been to Hyde Park and you're on the L uh, 55th right there. Uh, there are going to be those brick high towers there to support the English. I would uh, so like I a question to this program. Pardon me? How is Governor State into this program? They're just one of the advisors that was on the, the, the board. We had a, like a, a committee. Yes, yes. And they were committee. just a steering committee. They were just, they gave their opinion. They're not going to uh, uh, participate financially. Well, the point is, is that two owners own that land, 44 and 33, about 70 plus high acres that independently owned. And how we're doing this is developing, in fact, and one developer that wants to build an indoor, outdoor theater on the property according that, to- That's that, 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 that. She had our government state Part of They're only on the steering committee, but while the development was going on, we kept in mind who that POD area would serve. So they're not included in this financial? No, financially, no. Just so they're waiting. So, 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 so the question I have is what exactly is the municipal university project that you're going to financialize? We got to numbers, numbers, and yeah. then what? Get back. What's the profit? What's the, what's the benefits? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So that's something that this plan that was not a part of the scope of this plan. The, the purpose of the of this was to create a vision, to create, to listen to the residents, to listen to the people here, listen to Governor State, all the different people, the business community. We talked to a lot of the businesses here um, to see what the vision was for the village here at this site. So. One of the things that Nick mentioned at the very end, and um, this is kind of like breaking news here because it's going to be uh, announced at the RTA board meeting actually tomorrow or on Thursday. I'm sorry. Um, but the University uh, Park has applied and will receive another grant to do a special financing study to find that answer to that exact question. What's needed here? What's it going to cost? Where is it going to come from? What are the tax benefits? What are tax liabilities? All of those things. Um, we don't. We didn't have the answers to that within the scope of this project. And that's why we're excited to be able to do. Um, we're kind of calling it a continuation project or an implementation project to be able to give the village uh, the most transparent view of what everything's going to cost, how they're going to be able to get it done, and what what types of incentives or different tools that they can bring to the table to be able to get a, de a developer here to make that to, to fulfill the vision. Yeah. Um, so you stated that the first part is going to grant and it's a matching grant where the village will have to match 5%. Does governor state have governor state receive the grant, RTA grant as well? That's the that can be used. No, no. So uh, we, we work with municipalities, so cities, villages, um, townships even. Um, but no, Governor State, they participated as a steering committee member. Um, there was, you can pull it back up our steering committee. I can just like give you an, an idea. We had business community, Doc Foods, GSU, um, trustees. They're going to benefit a whole lot. And I just wanted to know, so we're going to have to match Brian's and Governor State's people paying a lot of tax attention to have to apply for a grant as well, where they should be. Yeah, that's a great point. So that, that's something I think. They won't just have it on there. Why they can't, you know, contribute to We're not saying that that wouldn't be the case, right? This is not to say that if student housing is built, that governor state would not have a part in financing that. That's not what we're saying. We're, we're saying that when we listen to the residents, the, the institutions, the business community here, that's what they told us. They said, we don't have student housing. We need student housing. We need more student housing. We need senior housing. We need townhouses, condos, 
apartments, restaurants, retail. That's what they told us. And so that's why we created a plan that represents the vision of the Okay, who are the five that you see and the residents that you went to discuss this because I'm part of a resident and community and I yeah, you know, so I just want to know who told and what else I did. Uh, homes and senior business and schools, and we, we need grocery stores. Like every, we need a lot of more stuff, right? Buildings, right? right. So the grocery stores was a hot topic throughout the planning process. I was part of the market analysis, looking at what's feasible, all that kind of thing, and that is in the plan. Um, so and so, the plan ain't finished, so you can start before you finish the plan. It's one thing. Got it, got it. I'm sorry. But you want yeah. to hear it. This, this was a public process. This, is a, this was a public process from the very beginning. This is a this is conception. Okay. So I think they've been out here two or three times already. Actually. We've had three public meetings in this building. We've had surveys that have been populated. We've had a website that's been this our project website has been on the village's website. Uh, from the very beginning, we've had live streams of our public meetings through the village channels. So yeah, so this, what they're giving you is a conception. That doesn't mean what it's going to finally look at as a final project. They've done this throughout a lot of villages, and you know I haven't worked with them, but we have other attorneys in the office who've done that. It's a conception. The idea is that you know, there's there's two phases. You can really select the the way I see it is two grants. One grant says you do the five percent. But then maybe you get the financing grant that will help you figure out how to raise your 5% is what he's telling you they've got there. So the way I see it is that actually your cost for the village is probably much less than it would be for someone who doesn't get that second grant per se. But remember, this is a conception. The idea may be a student housing, but it may not be all student housing. It may not, the idea is to do an improvement to an area that you see an improvement, but in regards to, I know you asked the question about, you know, you were a member of the public and you've never been involved. I'm, I'm, I was sure that they've been out here at least two or three times. So this is the fourth time. So, oh, you oh, you were there for it? Oh, you guys were there, okay. So I just I just wanted to be known that they actually have come out here. I just want to clear up that five percent. So the five percent was for this plan specifically, okay. Okay. like it, right, like it costs money to do this, and so um, we had a five percent match that was required. And that that application was submitted all the way back in, in 2020. So this has been a long time coming, right? Um, there is a new plan. No, I'm sorry. You know, that's a good question. It takes a lot of time to do these things. I think that um, between like capacity in, in the, with the RTA, with the village, it took a little while to get this started and, and kicked off. I think we really kicked off um, in earnest in, in January of 2022. Um, and so you look at things like it's not actually, plans usually take about 12 to 18 months to really fully bake. Um, and so that's why, you know, we're, we're here about a year later uh, to present the findings. Um, one thing I wanted to add to the attorney's statement was that these types of developments, uh, the reason why we do these plans is so that developers don't just come and put whatever they feel will make the most money, will be the most productive in their eyes. We do this so that the village can get there first, the residents can have their ideas, their input first, to create a roadmap so that when a developer comes in, the village and the residents can say, this, we, we went through this process, this is what we'd like to see here. And and you know work with the developer to make that a reality. So when you start, so that that is that's something we can answer. Okay. Yeah. It's not a matter of starting. This is just like a set of architectural plans, but it's conceptual. For example, right now we're trying to negotiate to get a grocery store in here, so a viable place would be in that location. We can. Negotiate with this grocery store to purchase the amount of land according to uh, the, the outline for this grocery store. Or there's an indoor outdoor theater that has been solicited. So this will be a great opportunity because it will be closed to the university parkway. But 
but collectively we're trying to get them to work with the owners to actually purchase the land in their car. So the village uh, at this point does not have a source that would purchase 70 plus acres for this. So rather than to wait until whatever, we're trying to get the developer to purchase from these uh, land owners. And right now it's uh, it's agricultural property, so it's not that bad. And Ms. if I'm not mistaken, phase one engineering is over with, correct? Uh, well, you mean no, not for this, not not for this. We're uh, they're just doing the, the layout of it. I, I yeah, this is a step that comes before any engineering. Yeah, okay, so yeah. Okay. we got approved for what two point time for the phase one. You're, are you talking about the uh, the station improvements? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's another piece of this is that the the station has major upgrades coming. Metra has is announced that they're doing station upgrades. There's going to be a bunch of things upgraded, parking facilities, um, the the underpass that floods. They're going to fix the flooding issues. A lot of those things. Um, is a, there's a major uh, project that's going to be coming, and, and I think this the uh, Mr. Mayor was talking about. Uh, the phase one engineering for the actual station upgrades at Metro. Um, they're also going to be adding, I think, a uh, employee area because it's the end of the line that employees need a place to kind of congregate. That's on the west side, correct? When is this happening? Mayor, have you it, heard about this? It, it's, it's, in, it's in the process now. So, thank you. Have you heard about this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you were at all the workshops, Ms. Mayor. You were on the workshops. I hear about stuff at the uh, met, at met, at the, uh met, but uh, I mean, it's getting ready to start real soon. It's already started. Yeah. So basically, the developers going to have the person to choose the land that they want to build on. Yes, so this is what it's looking like now. So, yes. so we don't have the person to land as of now. No. But right now, the development of our factory is back in their development cost. And the uh, landowners are uh, cooperating. And, and the study that we will uh, begin, we don't have a start date for it. We're targeting sometime in the summer of 2023. Um, and like I said, this is again a part of our community planning. Uh, program, you can go on the RTA's website and find a ton of information about other plans we've done in other communities that have been very successful. Um, it's always resident driven plan. Uh, but we are going to be embarking on a special financing district study that will come in, we'll bring consultants in that, that take a look at how much everything's going to cost, look at the different phasing. And that's one of the things that we uh, heard that we wanted to do with this. Uh, with this initial TOD plan was to phase it out because you're not going to just develop 77 acres at once. Most likely that's what the market analysis told us. If there hasn't been a boom of development of apartments and this types of thing before in the community, it's probably not going to happen out of nowhere, all of it at once. So we looked at doing an incremental way of phasing it, uh, looking at getting what the residents want and need the most in the first phase, which we identified restaurant, retail, uh, and then mixed income, mixed use housing. Uh, so that, you know, there would be possibly buildings with resident or uh, retail or restaurant on the first floor, apartments or condos above, and then looking at the further north you go in the, uh, in the development to have more of a, a less intense, less dense type of housing, things like possibly townhouses or even single family homes that back up to the golf course was something that we heard. Um, that, that was. Could I just say one thing too, with the number of jobs we have yet to fill with the development we continue to get out of here, it's like taking $1, and I'm sure you all have heard it, rather than to circle it within your community three, four times like someone told you. Because they don't have places to live, they take that dollar and go back out. So we're trying to, it's going to be an increased right, especially with the metro dollars that have been approved and the types of money that are going to be spent on metro. That parking lot can be repaired that so this is going to be substantial. So this would mirror with the development of the metro parking lot. And hopefully we'll have them too. This will be like a, a 
uh, a common area for, for uh, residents and university parks to have because there's no such place. Thank you, sir, for the Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Survey results? Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, there was a slide where we wanted to kind of go through quickly, but um, we can go back to that. Uh, and then also we can send this so that's available on the on the website that we have for the project that you can access through the village's website. Um, some of the things that uh, were popular in the survey, let's go to commercial preferences. So 32% said that a grocery store, drug store, convenience store, that type of use was welcome. 31% uh, said fast food or casual restaurants. 13% for community support services. Um, if you go over to transportation improvements, 27% of respondents to the survey said more walking and cycling chip, uh, trails that are separated from car traffic was wanted, safety improvements, uh, and better bus service. Um, the housing preferences, uh, and, and like Nick said, we had, I think, around 150 respondents to the survey. 29% um, said townhomes is something that they wanted to see. 30% uh, said single-family detached homes, kind of like a lot of the existing housing stock. More of that was one. Um, and then you had 19% of respondents saying two- to three-story multifamily residential buildings, that being either apartments or condos. Uh, and then there was a, a, a other as well. But this just gives you an idea of some of the types of questions that we asked on the survey and some of the responses that we got. Yeah, so the transportation improvements, a lot of that was talking about safety improvements or for pedestrians, uh, people riding bikes. And we, we heard a lot throughout the process about uh, the problems at, at the crossing. Uh, over and over again, problems at the crossing, problems accessing uh, the station, uh, turning left, turning right, both at the station. Um, and that's, a, that's one of the reasons why we suggested uh, adding another drive there that connects through the university and adding a light um, to help alleviate some of those traffic congestion issues. And there was no way to roll all the way down that, yeah, we didn't look at expansion of like adding lanes to the road. And, and honestly, that's not something usually that the RTA would have something that suggested you got to keep in mind that we're the transit agency, right? And so there's always going to be a piece of our interest to help improve transit service, right, and help make it easier and more convenient to access a train station, make it the easy option, make it the preferred option. We want to make service the best we can. We want to make access the best we can to the station. This still going to be a problem right there because the train, there's a train right there that's going to be good. Yeah. And when I get to it, right. I can get to it. Right. And we've heard that, and that's another reason why uh, adding an additional access up to the north that Crawford was something that we looked at. And, and these aren't fully fledged. This isn't fully fledged engineering for the road, right? This is a conceptual plan that we're saying, we listen to the residents. This, these are the problems right now. These are possible solutions. We're not going out and building the road tomorrow. We're, we're saying, this is an issue. We've got to find a way to fix it. These two might be possible solutions. That, that's kind of the stage that this is. That's still the problem. Like, so y'all go, you know, the other side of the buffer, this curve, so it's pretty the park. So, who's all going to go through the feedback area? Remember, I mentioned earlier that the road on the north side of the development was going to be used as the ingress, feedback, and off of front. That's the, you know, on that side. So, it would come, take a northern road, north of the Property, but you can only go on the um, golf course and you use that as the even west. 
stay on the park. So you don't have to let if they too try to get on the University Park and they live in that area. So there's a frontage road that's going to be placed there. And it'll be the east, east west and it'll curve and get out by the light onto University Parkway. And the other major structure would be on the north side of the property. And that would be so it's on the north side of the property, right where the turn is at so it would be north it would be north of the boundary of the north we would not be significant like plan to go through uh anyone's oh, existence. Oh. Okay. Yeah. 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 So man, yes, sir. Uh, so I, I think I heard uh, Miss uh, E say that this was in a hearing. Did I hear that right? They had a public hearing. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Free public hearing. Okay. What was the uh, outcome? Was it a lot of red? I'm not sure. Just public meeting. I don't know about public meeting. Surely. Oh, that event. That event. Okay. Public meeting. Okay, Miss Miss E. I want you to handle the item. Okay, this question, guys, we move forward with the TOG study. Thanks to the fans. This is the this is just the study. I mean, no, yeah, that's what it's called, the TOG study plan. Robert Boyce, yeah. Okay, Miss Ace, you want to go To move forward for the village. For the next agenda, right. right. Any objections? No objections? All right. Move forward. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Miss E, uh, we're going to go to item 5-1-B. I'll let you handle that one, please. Leo. Yes. Okay. Give us something to the microphone, please. Okay. Um. All right. Production distribution uh, company is uh, Commonwealth Edison's second largest independent contractor, and they are a minority company. They've done a lot of adjacent communities, but what we had them to do, they worked with uh, public work to get an idea of the lighting capacity that's needed to. And uh, this is the proposal that they're submitting um, summarize our current uh, total annual wattage as per Commonwealth Edison. It uh, based on the anticipated number of LED lighting and poles, um, it gave the new uh, kilowatt of hours and the annual savings based on that. And based on energy savings with these LED lighting, there's a 70% energy savings. And that's that's major. Um, you can imagine the village is given, every municipality is given X number of wattage per year 
on their bills. And if they use beyond that, the village has to pay for it. So um, in this case, the village was able to re receive um, a rebate from Commonwealth Edison. They made it available to the municipality. Some took advantage, some did not. This particular program allowed the village to take advantage of that. The toll project cost to do what we're asking to do on our lighting was $268,265.50. And we got, um, we will be getting a $93,093 rebate, which would mean that our net cost for this project of lighting would be $175,000. $172.50. So um, what it's saying is that uh, this will be a great opportunity for the village to actually not only get a reduction in our future um, light bills because of the reduction in the LED wattage with the replacement of the light it will be major it will also allow us to take advantage of this rebate that's being offered uh, by Commonwealth Edison. So in saying all of that, uh, a proposal, of course, uh, was submitted to the village on this. And based on this proposal, proposal um, we're, we took it as per by 10 years. We're showing um, uh, a less cost of an annual savings of 50 Seven thousand and fifty and twenty-two dollars on our annual um, savings on our annual bills, and you know, water, light, cell phone, water, or bills. If you exist in this country, you're going to end up paying. So this is a substantial savings of an annual amount that exceeds fifty-seven thousand dollars. So if you do the math, do it by ten years, and that's. What Substantial amount of dollars. So, so what is being brought forth tonight is um, they're asking that uh, um, this project be um, approved and it's the next uh, meeting. This project be approved so that public work will work in conjunction with this contractor, which is uh, production distribution Inc. And they will be installing um, some poles. They will be replacing LED lighting throughout the building. Throughout the building. In other words, we're going to get that attention to the light in the community. Totally light it up. Oh, is she finished? Oh, yeah. Okay. And we got something else of which we will pay $0 for. There is a poll uh, that um, municipalities, Illinois, and other areas have created. There's a special light pole where this light pole will act as a, a camera that will be able to identify any kinds of uh, catastrophic shootings or uh, robberies or whatever, and it will have a, an emergency uh, contact button. It'll have lighting that will be able to generate information that will be um, catapulted by the police department. We will have audio boxes where, <coughs> and they're willing um, to do that. Um, they asked the village, and we never did say anything, but they're willing to give us that free to let us be the sample so that other towns can come to University Park the intelligent poll. All the other towns can come to University Park and we can be the demonstrator for this and show this. And of course, they will sell to other towns and they would have to cost, but we will not have to pay anything for that. And all the appearances will be put on this particular poll, and they have a list of all the kinds of appearances that are on this poll. So, 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 so,
No, Commonwealth Edison has the wooden post. Ours are the metal post. Yeah. All the replacement poles will be metal. Okay. Ma'am, I'll be recognized. Um, Missy, this is your project that was presented to you. Did you talk to the village manager about this? Oh, this project was, yes, she was, when she came in, she was in a few meetings, and this was presented. All I'm doing now, tonight is just reviewing the final contract that was sent. So she has knowledge of it? Oh, yeah. everybody got so, knowledge. So, Ms. Scott, I would like your feedback to the village manager, and let me just give my one objection tonight is that when I see on my agenda that it is a presentation for Cleo's Down President Production Distribution Company related to the lighting project for municipal streets lighting, I would like to see the person there. I don't want to hear Miss Pete. He didn't know the lighter on the 28th. So. Well, he needs my vote. He needs my vote. Now, if he has the four votes to pass, be so be it. He but what? Well, but he need tonight. Tonight. Follow me, trustees. I'm not being a jerk tonight. I'm just saying he was supposed to be. I want to hear from him. I don't want to hear from anybody else. If I hear from anybody else, from the village manager, her position about it. It's just, it's just, we can't just say this sounds good and move it towards the agenda and vote for it. Because it's inevitable that one day something we vote for is going to bite us in the butt. And I know for a minimum of two years, I'm going to be here. So, Ms. Scott, can you give me your opinion about this? Because this gentleman is not here. And I'm, I'm not going to move anything to the agenda. I, I'm not saying Ms. Keith, Ms. Keith does get no. She gave a 10 year projection. I hope to make 60 years of age in the village save money. I'm not mistaken. Someone just calculated here what that's a $5,000 a month save. But are we going to put the money in the right place? That's the big question because we don't do it, we don't spend the money right. So we're jumping into something with a deal with somebody who's a ghost at this point. Because I know when I sat here and said, even let's go, let's go there to, to the golf course. When I said we budgeted $585,000, uh, $585, I said we budgeted. I didn't say give it to them. Because at the end of the day, the village, we should not be scrapping. I would like to see LEDs. I would. But also at the same breath, if somebody went out business, and if it was a miscommunication, we should have tabled this. Ms. Eve gave a good presentation. If she was the president of the company, I would, I would say okay, but she's not. So, Ms. Scott, what's your opinion about this? Did you have any input? Or I, I mean, I guess from what I'm gathering is that this was already kind of working and you just came in, or did I have when I came in, there was already, already discussion about this lighting project. Okay. Because, yeah, I have some questions for them, but I would like them to be here, man. That's, uh, just, that's, uh, that's understandable. So, so trustee, if, if there's an occurrence with the board, if they move it forward, we'll make sure that he's here for a presentation. And if not, then he'll just be denied when he comes. But there's a great opportunity to light up this whole community. Here, and I'm saying, here, here we go. Opportunity, I, I, man. I understand. Yeah. I understand. University Park done been blew up and rebuilt in four years. That's the way. And, and I'm just saying, at some point, I know. Let's if because the, 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 here's the thing: the, the next meeting is supposed to be the consent agenda. Why pull it off? It should have been here. Should have been here. Because I got one, two, three, four questions for him. Because he did projects in other communities, right? And I'm going to ask him about that. Because some of them, some, to, my, to one, one community, they didn't like them. 
They had a big problem with them. So you ain't gonna come here to University Park where the word easy money is right underneath the University, what the University Park. Because that's what they see every time they come here. So I just want it to be more of, uh, can we just, I, I'm not moving forward with it. I would like to see Kim, because I have four pivotal you know, questions. And I mean, Miss E is the economic developer. She was the, the, the village manager. Uh, Miss E has been with us for four years. She's going to tell you everything. But it's also at the same time the responsibility of the company. If they want to come here, if it's my company, let me do it. EO's distribution and related life project. They give it to me. I'm just going to have Miss E go ahead and do my presentation and go out. So, no disrespect, I'm just saying he should be here. I, I'm, I'm moving well, let, let's to, the, to the next cap. Wait, 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 hold on. March. Okay. No, no, no motion. No motion. No motion. Did I say motion? Yeah. No, no, no. Somebody, somebody said, motion. when you said it, someone said motion. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, 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 so make the sound better. It's a better. No, it, it, you see what trustee said, motion. Yeah, but no, if we can wait till March. So, trustee, let me do it this way. Let me ask the, 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 the council if there are any objections. If there are any objections, there's some good we'll just sit it down and do it next time. So, are there any objections on moving forward? One, two. So, I would like to, I would like to have, give them an opportunity. Absolutely. Absolutely. To ask questions before I make this vote on. Can we hear what he's saying, please? He's saying that he would like to also. Make sure that he has a presentation so we can get a full understanding from the horse's mouth, which makes all the sense in the world. Absolutely. And, and, and yeah, I was in that meeting. We made the hour mistake on telling them which meeting to be in. We did have that discussion that we all had to assess them. Oh, you didn't know it was going to be on here. Because we did, because I, I, I was in on all of that. And we, we had mentioned him uh, coming before the board. So, I don't know if it's this presentation, why he's not here, but I agree. We had told him he would have to come before the board. So it may be this presentation. So I think we should hear from him. So, so he goes into details on, about this whole thing. So, right. so, so, in what manner would you guys want to hear? Do you want to move it forward and then have a conversation? No. No, but you just want to have it for the next time. Next time, that's the consensus. No problem whatsoever. Okay. I think it'd be very informative for everyone. All right. But, okay. no. All right, let's go. Let's go. Absolutely. All right, so we'll do that. We'll get you, Mr. Uh, Production Light Company for the, for the 14th of March. All right. I, I know time is an essence because certain Yeah, that's Right, right. And I know the next one waits are going up, so we're trying to lock it in. They should have been here. make sure he was locked Okay. So we're gonna do both of them, five one C. So we're gonna have both of them. We're just gonna take uh, Mr. Mr. Bass and we'll have uh, Frank here as well on item five uh, five one C. Makes sense, right? That that code so right. So we want right. You know Frank? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 So we'll move both of those to the cow for the point C. So we invite our residents to come here and participate. Okay, discussion resolution of State of Illinois Enterprise on modification. Let's open the door. Back I just back. wanted to add something about this so you're aware of what this is about. So the village of Moni is adjusting their share of the Will Cook Enterprise Zone boundaries. Uh, this will include the removal of currently included parcels to allow for the addition of several parcels towards the northeast of the village. Overall, the village's total portion, which is money, um, for the enterprise zone will not increase. This does not impact the University Park, but due to the village's partic participation in the Will Cook Enterprise Zone, all member communities need approval for the modification. So this is just a formality that we have to go through because we're a part of the enterprise zone 
All of the communities that are involved have to vote on this. So, no, the village of Moni is adjusting their share of the Will Cook Enterprise Health boundaries. This will include the removal of currently included parcels to allow for the addition of several parcels towards the northeast of Moni Village. Overall, the village's total portion of the enterprise zone will not increase. This does not impact University Park, the village of University Park directly, but due to the village's participation in the Will Cook Enterprise Zone, all member communities will need the approval of the modification. So let me say this, the village of Matteson voted on this, Moni Park Forest, Richton Park, we need to vote on it, and Cook and Will County. So this is just a formality. It's not anything that's going to directly affect us, but anytime there are changes to the boundaries, all of the metro communities have to vote. So what is the part of the list? I can give you the exact uh, parcels in here, but it, it's, it's in Moni and it's the northeast portion, but I'll give the exact location down to the street for you. How come we don't know that? Right, that would touch us over on the northeast. Southwest. Right. If, if it's northeast, that would be more towards uh because I know we touch them where the right, trucks not that portion right? does not touch us. What is touch announced? <coughs> that's like when you annex this one, you have to have something that's right next to you in order to annex it. What is that? Where is it? It's the southwest corner. Of what street? I can look up the exact street for you, but it's in Moni. It's in Moni. It's not in University Park. We had one trustee that was here. Oh, yeah. My sergeant, right. Um, so we don't know what we're talking about here. It's we not don't. that it's the exact, it's the exact location of the street in Moni, but I can get that for you, but it is the northeast portion of Moni. Because we all participate, everybody collectively just has to vote that they're moving parcels around within Moni, but it doesn't affect us. So, so what the enterprise does is a it's a benefit thing that the state has. So it's a big part of a benefit package to all the participating communities surrounding, as you mentioned, are all participating in the enterprise zone. So that sometimes, like I, I'll use an example, we didn't use any tip or anything for Caravana, but they were part of the enterprise zone. And they kicked in their part to help make the deal go through. Um, is that what really happened? That's good on this press. That's what we're No, 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 when it was when Al McCown was still here, there was always something with land on that side of town, but it was more towards Frankfurt. So I was making sure this was not part of that. Are you talking about that? Oh, no, yeah. it's like the West. You're talking about way west. Yeah. But what, I, I wanted to make sure it wasn't wasn't that because I remember in one one meeting, McCowan was like very uh, how can he say he just said that if we don't pay attention, someone can take that land out. So I just wanted to make sure it was nothing. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm reflecting on? Okay. 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 I just wanted to make sure it was not the same scenario. Okay. Got gotcha. you. Are you talking about down Road? It's in Monique. Yeah. No. Yeah. Right. No. This. This. No. This was a long time ago with the village. We. We. Wanted to make sure that we kept our land, and you had basically, if you're not watching your land, so the other town was statue oh, really? and it's an in, and, and that's what I was just making sure that is it something that we're swapping boundaries, or if it is, I just wanted to see the map. Yeah, 
No, we're not swapping boundaries if it's specifically in the me, and it's nothing that abuts us. It's within their boundaries. It, it's nothing that abuts our 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 boundaries. So to speak. Oh. it's not up against it. It's inside their boundaries. Okay. It's Okay. And it still gives us one acre of clean wood. So we're under the 15 acres that a part of the real uh, quick enterprise zone. So this is fine. Okay. This is within their eligibility. That, you know, they did a switch of route rather than using this. They used it right across the street, but it's still their boundary. It doesn't have a northern uh, contiguous boundary or east to west. It's within only. I gotta ask, what is the significance of this being on the agenda? Is there something happening or something that is this is done all over? What is the significance? I think it's an annual thing. It's an annual thing, but anytime any changes are made to any boundaries, even if it's not in a an area that directly affects us, all the member communities have to vote on it. Moni can't just make the changes on their own. So everyone has to come together and agree on it. Um, did you find the street distance? I can give that to you. It's not like a street. It's a circular area. It's a parcel. Okay. So, this is for the purpose of development. I'm not talking to you right now. Okay, but I'm telling you. But I'm, 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 i am 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 i
resolution. The resolution, bottom line, it, it's, it's, it, was, it was supposed to be done, and it wasn't done. I haven't seen anything. It was about, done? I haven't seen anything. Yeah, I, I, I have not done. seen anything about rock salt, any kind of salt. I asked specifically a couple of years ago that do we have enough salt? And it was said that we did. Right, you see? Yeah. So, but we didn't have no salt. Yeah. So, I. Where's the, where's the thing before? So, I actually think you did approve the resolution, but we may not, for Ms. Scott's purposes, if she can't find the actual paper documents, I mean, that, because I, I distinctly remember one of the year, and yeah, 2019, because I remember um, um, Madam Clerk saying that's going to be resolution, blah, blah, blah. And so I think you actually did it, but if we don't have the paper copies, it's better to actually just, you know, kind of redo it just to make sure you get everything corrected. And I, so I actually think you did it in the past, and because because I actually, and I could go into my, my okay, yeah. go into my laptop here, but I actually think you actually did because I can kind of recall seeing the actual resolutions. Now what happens sometimes is that a resolution gets approved, and sometimes we don't get all the signatures together. And that's probably what happened here is that it was approved, but we didn't have this, the signatures. And when it gets to that old, I don't like to do things. Hey, I don't like to kind of ret go retroactive for something going back three, four years just because you know it, it maybe looks a little different, especially sometimes you have you don't even have the same board. And in this instance, I think 2019, we probably have some people born on the board at that time. So that's that's my gut. I mean, I can try to look at my computer and see if I can find it, but I don't know if I'll be able to find it just in the next few minutes for this meeting. Does, uh, the reason why um, I question it, I'm a pretty good counter of what EPW now, since back then here, I haven't bugged the hell out of it, but I do know that, um, that, that our storage can only hold 300 tons of salt. So I guess what I'm a little, I don't know, I guess 2019, I'm looking at 675 tons right there, which the total, am I correct, that this total was $66,447? Okay, because I'm gonna say this, and I can go back as far as Gary Richardson when I was sitting where Madam Clerk was at. I remember when I was close enough to, to a mayor sitting by when my eyes can look over. I know that sometimes I see $15,000, $10,000. Now I know, I know quite a few times we did, we did not get our bids in for that salt. I know that for a fact. And we don't need the old director here to validate what I see, what I see. The next year I see in 20, 2020, another 675 tons. Now it's impossible that Durrell would use the same exact amount. So this one, maybe we did get our bids in, this one was 53, yeah, $53,156. Now, <coughs> This is when I raised my eyebrow. When in the heck did we use this much salt in 2021? 1,775 tons for the total amount of $147,008. We did not use that much salt. That means that they dumped and dumped <laughs> and dump to refill that saw house. It only holds 300 tons. That's why we need to build a new one. Then the following this year, damn, this, this year we don't use, we, we, we need 175, 1,100. It ain't been no snow on the ground. Yeah, one snow. So what happened there? That's how it was ordered. That's just how it was ordered. It's just comfortable. Yeah, you got you gotta order a certain amount every year. And you have to purchase at least three quarters of it, otherwise you get charged for it. 
I charged the Lord for it. This year, when I first came in, it was going to fall. I got, I believe it was 400 tons of lift. Uh, we had probably 100 tons left, so I ordered more. Uh, just so that, because January, February plays games, which was snow and all that. Right. So I ordered another 500. So we had probably purchased about a thousand tons. But we still have a full shed line. So if we don't use it, we won't have to purchase done at the beginning of next year. But you still have to put a minimum amount in with the state so they can hold it. Are there order forms from year to year to year? Yes. When uh, the the, uh, the order is yes. year? Yeah, so, and, where, where is that and where's that documentation? And where's the bill? Uh, I have a floor mayor. I do know that. Well, I, I guess this would be towards Miss Scott. I know for a fact that um, maybe twelve hundred. I've been up here. I've been I'm trusty to have been up here the longest. Twelve hundred. Maybe it's about the most that we will use. I'm just being honest. That includes running salt down University Parkway and so forth. So I guess, and I understand, Matt, is you got to know a time to in order to drop the salt. I get it. You know, I just, I just know that was kind of excessive for us because that we just, like everything else, we're just not equipped. Um, I gave my opinion. We use the most of the salt out there in industrial park. We need to build a new DPW with a salt house out there in one of them tips. That's where the money should be. Take that and make that part of uh, like for a storage facility or something. So we can use it different, but on, on that side of town, I think that's what we need to do because majority of the development and the majority of the streets that we are running with the five-ton trucks, if I'm not mistaken, are out there in the industrial park because they're doing nothing but hauling all that salt from there back out there and coming back when they can just have, actually, if I'm not mistaken, you can have the three, three uh, salt house here as well as one out there which would be more sufficient and make sense if we have that amount of salt. It's just 1,700 was, was quite a bit. I, I just read the date, so, all right, I yield my time. Got a question? Trustee. 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 Because see, the state, be it 
the contract. Right. Who, who sends it to the state? Uh, I have no idea. Who did it in 2018? Normally said for I resolutions to the state. I just once, want to go the process. Once, uh, once things like that done, I think the documents are signed. Uh, whoever was in communication, usually it's the village manager to uh, follow up once. Once the resolution is done, they're signed by the mayor themselves. Then they go to the appropriate. Oh, the, the village. Yeah. That's, that's all I want. Okay. Thank you. So, excuse. So, are we like three hundred thousand dollars in debt for soft wood building? No. There's a huge debt. No. No. There's no debt. No debt. No debt. No debt. No. This is just the formality of the paperwork, and from you know, from time to time, the state does audits with all the different municipalities. Families. The state sent an email and said, hey, we need resolutions. We're, you know, missing some paperwork. I did speak with Madam Clerk. She told me that it was passed because I was not here at the time. But instead of us going back and forth and trying to find it, time is of the essence. I'd rather pass the resolution and make sure it's done than take that risk and not send it in or send in the wrong paperwork or have an issue that then we're, you know, it stops for our NFT funding. And I've seen this happen before where um, another municipality did not receive MFT funding because the paperwork was not completed from years past. And when you have a changing of the guards, when you have high turnover, um, such as village managers and things like that, things get lost in the shuffle at times. So I'd rather, um, I did speak with Madam Clerk and said that I'd rather be safe than sorry. So this is just a formality. Like I said, it's been approved by the village to extend the funds and the contractor was accepted but this is just missing documentation of paperwork that the state needs to close their files. So how do you want to make up paperwork that should have been done? Uh, 20, 20. They have the paperwork. They have the contractor. They have the numbers. We just had, we have to pass the public resolution. That's, that's it. So all that's going to happen now is I'm going to send this to the state. Um, and this will close that. This will close those years where they're missing the resolutions to match the paperwork. They already have the paperwork, the documentation. That's how we were able to match what resolutions needed to be submitted. Is that a falsification? No, it's not a falsification. The state gave direction. Right. And, I, and, and Mayor, I just would like for this, because let's, let's be honest that not these village managers. There was a village manager that was using the MFT funds for payroll. And we had got it unlocked under uh, Jonathan Townsend going into John Pate's um, tenures. So I just want to, you know, I think that I'd rather be safe than sorry to go through what we went through back six, seven years ago. I'd like to ask Ms. T, what happened to 2021 20, 20, 2022? What happened to them? Yeah. Uh, well, we have a public works director. And uh, primarily, um, somebody just said that it's up to the uh, village family. Well, it depends on All right. the public works. So, so we're going to move, move this on? No, I need to know. Uh, this, 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 this morning, this morning. you can ask her after the meeting. No, I this want to ask her. No, no, I no, want to no. Is that consensus to move forward? Yes, we'll move forward. And that's why you want to go yes. all through the call and just do all of these. We don't do that. I want transparency. Okay. I'm sick and tired of all of this. Thank you, Mrs. Morgan. I'm asking her a question. I'm waiting on an answer. She, this is I'm waiting on, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. This, I is a, hear from this, this is a public meeting, not a meeting of the public. So really, as I've indicated to you before in the past, at most places, what they do after the public comment, the board talks about this issue, and, and they don't actually allow this back and forth. The fact that they allow this I is I want great. everybody to hear what Ms. E has to Ms. say. Ms. Morgan, please. 
Millie. You can tell her after you talk to her at the meeting. It's not going to change anything. You got to move it forward. And, and, and boy, since we've got this, the presentation from 51K, and they're here, we don't want to hold on now. So let's, let's bring them all up. That's okay with everyone else. Let's move them up. Just go ahead on the school. Yes. Yeah. For Papa Louie. My name is Jasmine. Thank you guys for being here and listening us to us. This is my mother, Olivia, and this is my father, Mariano. Um, we're super thankful to be here. Uh, the reason we're here tonight is that we're hoping to receive a liquor license. Thankfully, we've been open now for three years. Um, our restaurant started back in 2019, right before the pandemic. We were ready to hit the ground running, but unfortunately, COVID kind of slowed us down a little bit. And then, um, had our doors closed for a few months, but thankfully in July, we were able to open July 20, 2020. Um, it's been really great. The village took great to us. The mayor has seen us a few times. Some of the trustees have come by as well. So we're super thankful. Um, we believe the town, uh, although it's a little outside of the town, kind of on the far end of it, we still get a lot of support from you guys. Um, a lot of our customers have been asking for an expansion and thankfully this year we were able to do that. Um, most of our, uh, how do I say, most of the construction is on the ends of everything now. So we're just hoping, I know there isn't any liquor licenses available at this moment, but this is why we're here today to see if we can get something moving forward and get you guys' thoughts on everything that, or if there's anything that we can do to help that move forward. Just one quick question yes. for you. Looking for a late, what time will you be closing your restaurant? So currently we close at 11.30, Monday through Friday. Um, on the weekends, we're at 9.30, but we do plan, if it is approved by you all, to open uh, a little bit later. Um, I'm not sure of the limits of that. But... That's why I was asking, yeah. because we've got two types of license Correct. that would fit what you're looking for. Yes. One is a class A which closes to our earlier than the class B, right. I which, is, which allows liquor service on the weekends until two, is it two or three? Two, two oh, or three o'clock, that's your class B, two your class A. Yes, I believe it's class B uh, that we are looking for because I, I think it has also um, the hard liquor in there uh, for like margaritas oh, yeah. and such. So yeah, both like... of them would allow you to pour okay. on the premises. Perfect. Okay. So, well, but, with that, probably class B would be best. Okay. Uh -huh. But neither would be carried out. Yes. Correct. Yes, nothing for carry out. Yeah, all within the restaurant. Yeah, so I just want to say that um, considering I'm not, I didn't know they were around the corner. Right, 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 right across from the right. Yeah. Yeah. Like a little small. I don't I'm know. Hamilton Avenue. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll say this considering that um, uh, every day at 1900 hours. Or, or 2100 hours, I would take my lunch at Los Burritos, and I'm the king of Mexican food. Um, you gotta have your Corona and your yes, margaritas. <laughs> and when Karen wanna go, we go have, but we'll come around there. So, oh, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Karen Brooks. Karen Brooks, sorry, Karen Brooks. I didn't take Karen Lewis out. I didn't take Karen Lewis out. I meant Karen Brooks, but uh, yeah, so we can have, uh, and I gotta have a Corona. So I, Mayor, I, I feel that, you know, they got competition around the corner and I think you need to be fair. Yeah, absolutely. So I have no problem moving this forward on the agenda. Matt, 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 a question. Anybody else has a question? 
feel free to ask them why they're here. If not, we'll. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Whenever any of you would like to come by, we're right on 1301. Um, like I said, we've been open two and a half years already. Um, just food, but thankfully, with the help of the village, the, um, the people around us, the truckers who are in the area, they've helped us expand so far and so much. So we're super grateful. Okay. I just got one other thing. Yeah. Um, the board will be voting on this on the 28th. So, but in the meantime, you can contact me or Ms. Webb to start your application process. I believe I gave Ms. Webb an application. Uh huh. Ms. Webb has the application currently. Yeah. yeah. The reason we are playing for this is difficult. The investment is quite a bit uh, with this COVID, and a lot of people now want to work or unable to work. So they have a lot of problems, but. We've gone forward because our customers constantly asking for that. Yeah, yeah. Some of our customers, they go across the street to Thailand. And, so and they bring it to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's not right for them and it's not right for us. Uh, I think we can serve and do what our customers uh, ask for. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have. We have a big eyes and big ears and this is to our customers. And try to do as best as we can. Okay, that will be okay. You'll be okay. We'll take care of that. All right. Well, it's just, thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Yes. Oh, why, why, sure. On the agenda for the 28th will be to amend our labor license ordinance to be able to be an A one class. Okay, leases. Five one C. Lease agreement for unit thirty eight forty one United Dental Resources Corporation. They are requesting a four year agreement at seven hundred a month with the options to renew. Are there any questions? This is this is American Dental. Go ahead, Manager Scott. And so this is for America Smiles, which is currently unit 70 and 80. Uh, Mr. Keith Crit Crittenden, forgive me if I said his name wrong, but he is currently there at American Dental. He's been there for um, a long time. He has that dental place that makes ventures and partials or whatever. So he's, he's right here. Um, and he is looking to expand. He is looking to, uh, he would like, uh, what is that, 38 and 40, and he wants to move forward with a lease agreement. It's $700 for both. Currently, he is paying 2,000, well, it would be a total of $2,308 for that unit, those two units, and these additional two units. Um, he would like a four uh, four year four year terms, and he would like it to run concurrent. <laughs> yes, we would have to publish for this one because it's it's beyond the two yeah, years. Anything over two years that I need published. <laughs> so, a question that was posed to me: Did we ever do like the market? rate or rent for the town center because um, one person brought it to my attention which makes sense that say for these guys alkaline that's a thousand dollars right a month that they're paying that's someone oh i heard something 
someone said something. But no, are they, you know, a thousand not the square footage? Oh, and I think in 2016 there was something that was if I'm dead, if I'm not mistaken, 2016 there was oh, yeah, yeah. 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 we can't hear you, T. In 2016, the village did, and we had what's called a uniform commercial lease for each property, and it's based on square footage. But I do have that, and that's where I think they're getting the amount of 26. Because at this point, we have, I guess we consider this the town center project where we done threw all this up here. I guess we marketing this out. My question will be if the amount of money that was poured into the town center, wouldn't it raise the value of it like you would do if you did a house? Isn't that a good question? Increase the value of the town center. Right, it increased the value of the town center, but also, I mean, who would go buy a house or have a house, value is 20,000, and let's say you pour 50,000 into the house, are you still gonna rent that house out at the value of 20,000, or are you gonna rent it out possibly to the value of 100,000 for the house or the, or the property that's next to it? I mean, that's the reason why I just asked that question because it's 2016. That was 2016, but since 2016, look what doesn't happen to the town center. And it's being promoted as a town center project. And I've heard that we possibly were supposed to be selling it or it may be on the market. I don't know. But at the end of the day, everyone gets a thousand dollar deal. It should should some people should be paying more. That's my point. So we want to make sure that if we're going to hand out two units at seven hundred, I mean that's 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 a sweetheart deal. We 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 can't keep giving sweetheart deals. If the village is supposed to be becoming better, the town center is supposed to be improving. Why are we giving these sweetheart deals? That's my point. Can I just make this statement? Back when uh, the mayor first came in, he brought in these people over here to Avalon Water, gave them $600 a month it's more for than, six months. If and you're going to say something, just say, them, say it right. After that, it was $1,500 that they were supposed to be paying. $600 for six months and $1,500 from that point on, that's precisely what happened. And I can't get no four you on it. No, they, it has just 700 for both. That's what I see. Right. Right. And I'm, I'm just saying, yeah, I mean, I'm, like, like, like the value of the town center had to go up since 2016. The, the, the parking lot is paid. Look, 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 all of it. So, and there are businesses in here, and if people want to come here, I, I'm just saying that 700 for two facilities, even though I like him, he's a good guy. I met him. But I'm just saying that it's 700. Should we should we consider for two two store Let me add this. So it's a little under nine hundred square feet. Um, I also um, spoke with Claudia and was working to get a spreadsheet of the leases. Um, I'm going to start to put those leases and spreadsheets together um, so that we can get a hold of the amounts of income that we're bringing in. I do think the reason why I wanted to do this spreadsheet is because I think that as these leases come available, we do need to look at increasing the prices. We got questions back here. One sec, guys. And actually, before the meeting, um, trustees, me and the village manager Scott actually were discussing this 
in regards to, you know, trying to get a spreadsheet for that. I mean, because you bring up a valid point. I, there's no doubt about that. Um, and I, I guess from my standpoint, maybe what you want to do is, you know, you get this, you can, you know, we get the spreadsheet together and you can look at it so you know where you are and you can assess kind of where you are. Because I don't disagree with anything what you're saying, um, but it just happens to be this was a conversation we actually had before the meeting um, talking about, you know, what are your, you know, she wanted to get a code so you guys are informed about all of the leases that you have here. So I don't, you know, obviously it's your decision of whether you move forward or not, but maybe part of the moving forward process is getting that spreadsheet so you can say, okay, this is where we are, but really we want to go forward. We're going to do this. I mean, that may be your best option because I trust you folks. I think you're right. Like, you know, you know, it's now I don't know, like depending on where you are, you know, like if you're in downtown Chicago, at least prices are actually going down because everyone's moved up in the pandemic. But if you're here, you know, maybe these prices are going up. The okay. idea of where you are, it may be something to discuss. So, uh, may I say something, please? Yeah, go, go ahead, Ms. Will. I have maintained a spreadsheet for the last four years, no, longer than that, six years or longer. I have presented to the uh, village manager a spreadsheet that has all of the lease expires, the date they expire. In fact, the first week that they expire is coming up would be the barbershop in October 22. The rest of the leases expire, I'm sorry, 23. The other leases expire in April of next year uh, and October of next year. So the first one that comes up won't be till October. I also have put a spreadsheet on there that all of the price, all of what the uh, leases are per month. On the spreadsheet, it shows also how much we get in per month and what we get in here. So, but I did give, give that to the village manager, and I can uh, give it to you, attorney. I can forward it to you tomorrow. It shows the date when, when the lease expires, the name, and how much each uh, unit is paying. Yeah, no, it was just a conversation we had. So she's no, but I'm just saying I have supplied that information. Okay. And that would have been over, over a week ago. So if you'd like to do it, I can uh, send you I'll actually well. forward it. I just wanted it uh, reorganized. But I'll no. send it as is. Yes, please do. That has all the information that it's needed. So okay, like I said, that's up to the mayor. Oh, uh, that's who I report. Be up to the mayor. Well, that's who I report to. She got to talk to him. Excuse me. I want to know if we're looking at this is one hundred. Am I correct? And we're looking at three units. Is it comparable in size to two? Okay. So how much are we paying a month? For how much are they paying a month for this unit at one hundred? Right now, 100 is, uh, this is per the village manager. They are paying $600 a month until they open. <laughs> now, wait, now wait, open the door. No, no, I, we originally spoke about that. And when I ended up going back and reading some of the things, talking to code enforcement, and some of the things that had happened in the past, I did not sign an agreement, as Webb is aware of that. And I am going to sit down and have a meeting with them about things that, Expectations and things that need to be done, or they need to leave. So, if they we're be paying, done. they're paying six hundred dollars a month. Is there? Is are they current? Yes, they're current. No, but I'm as sorry. of this month, I believe. Yeah, as, as of this month, they have not paid. I've submitted bills to them. They did not pay as of this month, and I submitted the bill for six hundred dollars. So, how about the money they submitted? Now, now, wait a minute. Now, let me say this. Now, wait. That's somewhere you don't want to go. Not here and not tonight because I will expose them. And I will expose people on this board when it comes down to So let's look at this situation and we're not going to go there because they're get, they've gotten over for the last three years. Now, I have documentation and it is not about how much money the village has spent, uh, how much money they spent, is how much money we've given them to do things over there. So if they're not current, and it's $600 a month, which is just ridiculous, that makes absolutely no sense. We don't even know what's in there because from my understanding, the fire chief is not allowed in there. So we need to figure out what's actually going on in that building at $600 a month. Because it makes no sense. Now the dentist, the dentist is paying how much? 
1100. No, no, no. The is paying 1154 for you to get 70 and 80, so it's 2308, $2,308 per month. And they, and they do pay on time. Now, let me say this also the fire department has been over there recently. Well, he, he, he told me he had. No, no. Say, he could have been in the last week. Within the last week, the last week though. But they've been over there how many years? It's, it's been at least four years. And they told us, and wait a minute, and that company explained to us when they came that they would do the facade of the building. That's what they told us they would do. And the landscaping. And they were going to increase their rents. And they haven't done so. So we're trying to figure out what's really going on with the village's property. This is unheard of. <coughs> it's unheard of. So this needs to be addressed. And I do have documentation to show that we have bought things that we should not have bought to assist them with what they're doing next door. What is that? I wonder where to get some other questions. All right. Mayor, if you don't so, recognize the fact so, so the question is on 3840. Excuse me, we have residents in the back of the house. I'm asking, I'm, but I'm asking you guys about 3840. What, what do you guys want to do with the Christmas? Let me run this meeting, not you, okay? I will address the residents in a second. Just give me a minute. Yeah, we have to move that to the market. Right. 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 So, no. right. the, the March the Yes, Ms. So, the question I have they have the dinner cap two units already. He's right next door. Okay. So, we want to get him another two? He's yes. yes. What? I thought we was looking to build up the why we want just a whole full of dinner. I, I thought we were looking to do. The reality is the strip mall was empty. And in between time of reassessing the spreadsheet that was incomplete that I'm about to send to the board. Excuse, wait, excuse me. I don't think that needs to be done like this. And what I does not need to be done? Incomplete. Oh, and it was. That's but why she, that she said that it was sent. That, no, because she did not do that in a sign on time. Like it should so, be, and we respect that you with that. So I expect respect in this situation as well. But but just to throw out, I'm just saying so, that the strip mall location they're asking fifteen hundred dollars for units that need a whole lot of work, and our units have are looking much better. We did some improvements, so I would, I don't understand why it was even acceptable to say you should be doing your market analysis to say what's this. Property needs to be rented out. Go ahead, ma'am. Go, go ahead, ma'am. Yes, I want to address um, Trustee Sonia about what she said. She stated that uh, we helped uh, 
buy some items for this unit here 100 and i was asking what did we help with what are the items we helped with all of the civil family of the unit um and about five thousand dollars without board approval that's what we did do that we can start with 46 000. 40 yeah. 46,000. 46,000. Like this? Yes. Without what? 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 Without it's their money, and we have to look at it. And we need police, and we need things that we need in the community. And my thing is, is this: we need a spreadsheet, as a stock that would. That, I, mean, I understand where you're going. Okay, I mean, with the, you know what? Regardless to whether it was to your stand, not to the things that was not to the board stand. But we did not do this public. I understand. I, 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 whatever. Okay. Well, my thing is, is this. We need the residents to know and see the spreadsheet. So would you post it? Corruption. So, so what are we doing for the, the consensus? Oh, yes, it is. We're going to go to the March 28th meeting. All right, the next item. Five. What's the consensus on this one? Move to the March 28th meeting. Yeah. All right. The last item would be a discussion ordinance lease for unit 34 with our step for NFP. Yeah. Senator Hill. Good evening, uh, Mayor, uh, Trustees. Oh, sorry. Good evening, Mayor, Trustees. Especially the citizens. Are we here tonight? Uh, I'm here tonight to talk about. I'm here tonight to talk about our steps of order and what we are hoping to do. Your name. My name is David Collins, and I'm here tonight to talk about what our steps of order is hoping to bring to this community. In fact, we're already here. Uh, we've been operating a not for profit charity. And uh, the, the south suburbs range from Dalton all the way to Moline. Uh, I I really got familiar with UP because uh, of, I call her a friend. No, I call her a friend uh, in Dalton, and she was very community minded. I'm talking about Elizabeth Scott. She was very community minded, and uh, she was always supportive of different events, different activities, different things that we would bring to the community. I remember one, we did Major League Baseball pitch hit the run. We had mayors, all the mayors of the Toronto community. We even had the center there and we all got together. We did a commercial and brought some great community spirit and it was a lot of fun for the children. Fast forwarding, uh, I've worked with Ms. Scott on clothing giveaways, food giveaways, uh, different activities for the community. And we specialize with helping the children. And what we hope to bring is a, a distribution at, uh, and a, a place where they can come uh, to pick up clothes. We have a vision for it. And our vision is that one day, every child and their family will be able to afford the essential clothing items that they need, not only to survive, but to thrive. And so all the items that we're gonna have in our, in our shop 
it'll be available to the children at no cost. Uh, I've got two grandchildren in uh, Coretta Scott King. And I, and, I, and I graduated from Governor State University, so I'm very, very familiar and, and bonded into the community. I've seen a lot of people come and a lot of people go, and what we're hoping to do is just put a stop here. And we want to bless the children so that we all can move forward. Uh, and that's just that. We've got a three-step model. We do clothing drive, we collect clothes and from donations from corporations, we collaborate with the community at large. That includes government, private, business, citizens, wherever you may fit in. Uh, we've got room at the table. And uh, once those clothes are gathered in, we process apparently at our storage facility and our partner sites. We can use this as one of our major places where we can, uh, let's say monthly, we can do a free shop where the community can come in and get what they need for the club for their children. That would even include shoes and pampers, different things, different items that they kind of crush the budget. We figure that what we have to offer <laughs> is something that's is valuable and will be helpful. And we really, we just we love what we're doing and we have resources to get it done. And that's the reason why we're here asking for a lease tonight. Okay. All right, now, are there any questions of the council? Trustee Jenkins. How much is the lease? $900 a month. Wow. Wait, hold on. And let me say this. No. Let me say this as I stated earlier. As these leases come available, and also if you could please look, I just sent the uh, I sent the spreadsheet and it's forwarded straight from Ms. Webb with incomplete things on it. So I say that to say that as these leases become available. As these leases become available, um, we need to increase the rent and we need to look at and reassess these units. This is a new lease. This is a lease that it's a new, it's a new, it's a new leasee. We need to look at increasing the rent. So this is one of the rents that is going to be new. And I do think that the rents do need to increase. I agree. And that is why I was trying to get a spreadsheet, but I need a completed spreadsheet with all of the stuff so that I can tabulate and look at where we're at. All right, man. That's that's what on, on, on this. Yes. That's, uh, that's not that's, on this that's person. Not, yeah. 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 You can see. So this you don't have to publish. So we're going to make sure we come out. Consensus. <laughs> questions. I got a question. I, I do have a I do have a question. Yes, sir. I was looking at at the website. I saw ministerial services. I just want to make sure for the record that this is not a <clears throat> church institution. Well, we uh, this is, our not for profit is a charitable organization. We do have support uh, at, from in the ministerial field, like I said, but we understand separation of church and state. And what we're proposing to bring here is, is going to be on the charitable basis, so we can collaborate with not, all not a church, service. not church service. Okay, but we'll be able to collaborate with all services. Uh, we want to bring in some volunteers from Governor State. We want to uh, go into the schools. We want to do a whole lot of things. So it's based on, it's a business based on just helping the children. Okay. I just want to just declare. Okay. Ms. Walker? Before you start, uh, how do we get, get finances? How do we get our finances? Now, we uh, <laughs> need to find out. Our finances come in a variety of ways. Okay. Uh, we can either do it through the state government, the federal government, we partner with uh, local businesses. Uh, Citizens just like yourself, uh, community organizations, government officials, we, we, we have a broad array. And uh, we, uh, we, we believe that uh, it's valuable. And the people who fund us, they believe the same thing too. And once they hit the doors, I wouldn't be surprised because you're such a concerned citizen. If you've got any children, maybe you'll be help, helping us out as well. Yeah, I probably will. Wait a minute. So do you have, so you will be able to find the nine hundred? Well, that's what I was getting at. Well, uh, at, at this point, we uh, we are able to pay the rent. Okay. Right. What about the tax bracket for people donating? Donated things. We have five hundred one c three, five hundred one c three, and every uh, the, every donation is tax deductible. We've been operating. 
this arm since 2016. And you said you're out of right now? Right. You can look at our website, you'll see a whole lot of things. Uh, so we've got a, a lot of things that we participate in, and we, uh, we, we, we're sustainable, and we plan to be around. All right. Whatever activities that we do, because we range from, from Dalton to Will County, uh, we publish different events, different types of things that we do. But what we plan to do here is uh, process and distribute those clothes to, to the children. That's what we plan to do here. Okay, consensus? Yeah, yes, sir. Well, no, it won't be. It, it won't be daily. We'll have a, a monthly distribution at this point, and then according to the need, appointments. Uh, so it won't be just like uh, your regular retail shop. Uh, it'll be a specialty shop, and we want to focus on those that are in need. But we we don't we're not turning anybody down. This is our last event we just did uh, at the U.S. Bank in Gold. It was uh, it's it's called sharing the warmth in the community. And we gave uh, we serviced over six hundred children with uh, shoes, coats, socks, different things like that. And it was at no cost to. Can I pass it around? Sure, absolutely. No, no, no. We don't do the adults. No, no. A lot of folks were saying, you know, they looked at the 18, 20, because there's some big kids. They were like, I can fit this. We said, oh, Lord. <laughs> you know, but what can you say? Once they get it, when they go out the door, what they do with it, you know, that's what they do with it. So, what day would you be open for the donation? Well, we pretty much got that covered uh, for us. The donation, they won't be actually coming there. We'll have it set up and more information will be followed because it all has to be processed before it gets to uh, where it can be distributed. Everything must be neat, clean if it's uh, used. And even if it's brand new, it must be uh, in a way that it's something that the person would say, I, I, I really want this. A lot of times the stuff that we have uh, are on the line of what I got on right now. So we're not trying to, to, to bring people uh, where they can't go when they're laughed at. And that's the one of the reasons that we're here because a lot of the parents they dress their kids very nice. And if your child is going in and he can't dress as nice, that has an effect on them. And we're trying to bridge that gap. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. What is your name? Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Anything else from the council? Chief, did you have anything you want to say? Well, let me just say, let me just say something for the camera. A little bit about the chief, then we'll get out of here. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and Ensuring public safety and peace in our community has been a priority for myself and this entire board. There has been a historic nationwide spike in violent crime, and we need short-term and long-term solutions. One of those immediate solutions is the appointment of our new police chief, Mr. Dale Mitchell. It takes an ongoing collective effort of community police. We were seeking a leader who will build community trust, provide structure, meet the department's recruitment and retention goals, and set a new standard for public safety. Mr. Mitchell was untimely selected from the top three finalists, and we are confident he will lead the department in the right direction. Mr. Mitchell brings over 30 years of law enforcement. He holds a master's degree in criminal justice and a bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary studies with a minor in criminal justice, both from Governor State University. He is leaving his post as the deputy police chief in Hazelcrest. Let's give a warm University Park welcome to our new police chief, Dale Mitchell. Thank you. Uh, 
Okay. I'll be very brief. I'd like to thank you all for uh, uh, for your uh, trust in me, and I plan to do um, a very good job for you here at University Park and lead your police department uh, and to even greater heights. You have a group of men uh, that are working very hard uh, to provide you with the quality public safety that you deserve. And we're going to hit the ground running, and you're going to see some things happening in University Park and in your police department that you'll be very proud of. So thank you, and I appreciate your trust in uh, giving me this, uh, appointing me to this position. And I take it very seriously, and you will see me working very hard for on your behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Regretfully announced uh, the passing of Chandler's Chandler. Everybody know that Donna Depp on turn. Donna Depp on. Everybody knows who she is out here. Uh, uh, yeah, everyone should remember Mr. Chambers as being a member of the Fox Advisory Committee with Johnny White, uh, Pete Gord, and Chuck McCullough, and others. These were true volunteers here at University of Park. James was an original member of Family Night at Hickory Elementary. Our hearts go out to Don and her family during this time of sorrow. Um, I don't have uh, any detail of the arrangements yet, but I just I don't want to have to have sitting in my kitchen. If I can see Donna, so I'm very close with Don and Jane. And I from my kitchen I can sit and see Donna's house. And this he died Sunday night. And Monday, I sit in my kitchen looking directly over at her house, and I see this light blinking over there in the car. I don't know what it was. And then I saw him bring James out, and I knew what it was. And I called her and asked her what's going on. And she uh, let me know that what was happening. So we get, Keely will also probably have further details uh, of the funeral arrangement. But I just want to make sure I made this announcement because everybody knows Donna and James, and James forever. They served on your 90 way and it served so I just want to keep their family. Thanks. Thank you so much, Sharon. Is there a motion? Move, yes. second. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Ah. None. Thank you, guys.